This lecture will continue talking about UART, uh, talk about more of the bits that are transmitted in addition to the, uh, the data bits and the start bit. So parity bit, this is an optional bit that you can submit, that you can transmit with the, with the data. Uh, so transmission is assumed to be error prone. This is very common in long distance communications. You can have lots of electromagnetic radiation, some kind of noise, right? So this uh, may be synchronization accuracy or inaccuracy or something like that. There are lots of reasons why there can be noise on the line. So there can be times where you expect a zero, a zero is being transmitted, but the receiver receives a one instead, or vice versa. You transmit a one, but the receiver receives a zero because of various types of noise. So to adjust for that, to take care of that, at least to detect that, we have parity bits. So a parity bit is optional. One parity bit can be sent with each packet, each, say, group of eight data bits. The parity bit uh, is used to check for error. So the parity of a sequence of bits, so let's say we're sending eight bits, eight data bits. The parity is the, uh, the count. You either have even parity or odd parity, and it's related to the number of ones that are transmitted. So if you're transmitting eight bits and an odd number of those ones an odd number of those bits are ones, then you say you have odd parity. And if an even number of those bits is a one, then you have even parity. So parity is always going to be even or odd. Let's say even is zero and odds of one. So parity of, of any sequence of bits is always even or odd, depending on how many bits you're transmitting. So what we do is, if we use a parity bit, we send the data bits. And then we also send one more bit, which is the parity bit, which is either zero or one. A zero if the parity of the other bits is even, a one if it's odd. And then what can happen is on the receiving end, it can check the parity. So it can count the number of, number of ones that it received, and checks if it's even or odd, and then it compares that to the parity bit. If the parity bit set is even, if the parity bit's zero, let's say, indicating this even parity, and it has an even number of ones, then it assumes, okay, transmission was fine. Where if it gets odd parity, then it assumes that uh, transmission was not fine, and it needs a new transmission. It sends, basically sends us some kind of request to say, send me the data again. So as an example, oh, and this bit, this parity bit is sent after the data bits. So you start with the, you have the start bit, then you have the data bits, then you send the parity bit, then you send the stop bit or bits. You can send one or more stop. So, Here's an example. Uh, we've got some series of bits, eight bits, and there are five ones in those eight bits. So it's an odd number of ones. That means this set of eight bits is odd parity. So uh, the parity bit that would be sent with this would be a one. So you'd send these eight bits, then you send one more one. And the total parity is odd. So now at the receiving end, it, as it counted the number of ones that came in, it counted five ones. It realized that was odd, compares it to the parity bit. And the par if the parity is also one, the parity bit's one, then it says this is OK. Where if one of these bits was flipped in transmission, then the parity would have changed. Say a zero was changed to a one, or one changed to a zero. Either way, the parity would have become even, and it would have noticed a mismatch. So if a single bit is changed, then this can be detected using a parity bit. Now note that this is, a very, this is sort of a minimal check, because if two bits are altered, then uh, you won't detect it, right? Because two bits, say you change a zero to a one, then you change a one to a zero, then the number, total number of one stays the same, even though the data is still incorrect. So you wouldn't catch that. If two bits are changed, you might miss it. But uh, you would miss it if two bits are changed. But if a single bit is changed, you could detect that using the parity bit. So uh, the, in addition to the parity bit, you, can, you have to have stop bits. Now, the parity bit is optional. Stop bit is required, although you can have one or two stop bits. You have to have at least one stop bit. So in this example, this timing diagram, we show one start bit at the beginning, eight data bits, no parity bit, but then we have the stop bit right at the end, uh, single stop bit in this case. Now, the stop bit, uh, basically, it, it's high. It's always high. So after the eight data bits are sent, and a parity bit, if the parity bit is going to be sent, uh, the, the signal should be high. So the stop bit is the time when the signal is high after the, the transmission is done. It's expected to be high. You can send one stop bit or two stop bits. Uh, if it's not a high, if it's not a one at that point, then it's assumed that an error has occurred and retransmission is going to be required. So uh, data throughput versus baud. So the baud rate is the maximum number of transmit transitions in a second the maximum rate of transmit transitions, which is the maximum bits that you can send. And it's true, you can send that many bits, but not all of those bits are actually data bits. So the data throughput is not as high as the baud rate, because you're sending the stop bit, 
the start bit and the parity bit. Uh, the stop bit could be two bits and the parity bit. You're sending this extra stuff that is not actually data. So the tra data transmission rate is going to be less than uh, the baud rate. So uh, these signaling bits have to be sent. So let's imagine an example where you're sending eight data bits, you're sending one parity bit, and one stop bit and start bit, let's say. So you're sending eight data bits, but there are 11 actual bits that you have to send in order to send the eight, right? Because you've got to send the start bit, the parity bit, and the stop bit. Uh, now let's say the baud rate is 9600 baud. So 9600 baud would be the maximum rate of the number of bits, uh, 9600 bits per second can be sent but you're sending 11 bits to send eight data bits. So your data throughput you'd com would be less because your transmission efficiency is only eight out of 11. So you get 73% efficiency out of that. So your data throughput rate is actually only 73% of 9,600. So you get uh, you know, 6,981 uh, bits per second of data that you can actually send when you're using 9,600 baud under those assumptions. Thank you. <music>